everyone, it's Serika and welcome to my Hobonichi and Traveler's Company haul video. Okay, so I got the A6 cover in Cafe Ule. This just really called out to me because of the neutral colors, the plaid, which I'm really into this year, and just like the gold. I don't know, it's just so pretty. And this was the most expensive thing that I'm going to show in this haul. And I don't have anything like this. So I really wanted to try out a zippered a6 cover and this just seemed like the perfect fit and my most favorite thing out of this whole haul video but i didn't get any a6 hobonichi i'm not going to be using that as my main planner i actually did a little throwback thursday post of an old a6 hobonichi that i used um in 2022 or no 2018 sorry and it was just too much for me I don't think it would work for this season of my life, but I just really wanted to grab this case so that I can put other A6 notebooks in there. And I love the A6 size, so I know that I'm going to want to use this eventually. I don't know if it's going to be like another type of A6 planner, just a regular A6 notebook for journaling, anything like that. I just, I love this size so much and I really wanted to get a zipper case for it. So I wanted to get this year's case. And honestly, now that I've looked at it and I feel it, I'm like really, really happy that I got this. Yeah, definitely a splurge item for me and I wanted to start off with it right away. But I just love the colors and the leather just feels so nice. I don't know. I love it. And it was a little bit more expensive for me because I picked it up from Atlas Stationers this year. As some of you may know, the Hobonichi website was down when it first opened and I tried to order the things that were in my cart. Within a few minutes, I realized that the server was probably going to be down for a while and I just didn't want to stay up all night um, trying to get through. It was 10 p.m. when the Hobonichi released, so as a really tired mom, I was like, I'm not doing this. So I went straight to a retailer in the USA, Atlas Stationers, and I used my friend's code. I just popped in the code Joy Letters to get a little bit of money off. And yeah, it does end up being a little bit more expensive, even with the shipping and everything. Um, but honestly, I felt like paying that little bit of extra money was worth like my relief and just not wasting time trying to get through to the server. And I didn't get the um, Paddington Weeks because they didn't have it at Atlas, but at the end of the day, um, it's fine. <laughs> like I wasn't super invested in getting the Paddington Weeks anyway. It made me like rethink why I wanted it. And the only reason why I was considering the Paddington Weeks is because my kids and I really love reading Paddington books together. They are three and five and they're like super into it. We have a Paddington treasury book and we get Paddington books from the library all the time. But um, at the end of the day, I was really happy with my second choice, which I will show you. So yeah, this is my A6 cover. I'm gonna put that to the side. So my second choice for the weeks was the leather steel gray. And I would have loved it if it came out with like a caramel color or like something like that, browns I'm super into but gray is also fine. None of the color covers were like really sticking out to me. Um, none of them were like my color scheme, but um, this is fine. I really wanted to add a weeks back into my lineup after being without a Hobonichi for many years. Um, I did not do a Hobonichi in 2024, and the last time I got this much Hobonichi stuff was never, so this was very ex a very exciting year for me. I really like the packaging. 
I had previously tried a Weeks in 2019 and that one was the cloth cover. So this is the first time I'm trying the leather cover and I really like it. Whee. It's very plain and I think I'm just going to either keep it plain or decorate it with some vinyl stickers or something like I have a bunch up here or maybe not they're kind of ginormous compared to the weeks because it's such a small size but yeah I wanted to use the a weeks for a social media and content planner because that's the only thing that I really need like a pre-printed out planner for because I'm trying to be as consistent as I was at the end of this year with social media. So I decided to add a social media planner to my lineup and I'll get a little bit more into all that and like why I think in a separate video. I also got a case for the weeks. This is the Note, and I just got it in black. I mean, that's the only color they had in Note. So, yeah. Ooh. I love it. This was also a splurge for me. I wanted to get something that could be used as a wallet but now that I look at it, I'm like, this is kind of big for a wallet. But like all these card slots, I was thinking that it could be a good like combination wallet. But then I'm like, hmm, I don't know. The zipper pull is a little small, but I mean, I get why. You don't really want to have something super bulky on the inside. So I'm going to just stick this in here. Ooh, a pocket. Nice. And let's see how this works. Wait a second. Is there a little pocket in here? Like a double pocket? Oh yay! I see. Okay, you just put it in to the back flap, which I thought would be... That's what I thought. Okay. It's embossed. Note means night in Italian. Uh, it's striking deep black, definitely very chic. It says, okay, it doesn't have any info on like what flap to put it in. So I'm just gonna go with my gut and say that it goes in whichever flap I want. Like so. There's a little pen loop as well. I think with time, it'll probably get a little softer and more pliable. I really like this so far. I mean, everything that Hopanichi does is pure quality, so this is good. Ooh, little hidden message. More flaps. This is very roomy and nice. My previous wallet is very tiny, and I just keep getting more cards and stuff that I have to carry around, so I feel like this will be a really nice wallet. And I really am very invested in being consistent with my content schedule, my planning um, around that is going to be way more structured, I think. And with all the planning for social media posts, because they happen so often, um, I just wanted to extract that from my main planner and put it in here in its own designated planner. So that is the weeks that I have. Then I have my like long-term a6 cover that I just want to have because I love A6 size so much and I don't have like an actual notebook for it but it's just something that I wanted to like grab now since I really really love the look and um, the aesthetic of it. Um, let's move on. So even though I was not able to grab the Paddington Weeks which now that I look at this combination I'm actually really glad that I didn't because I feel like this matches the case better. Um, I went ahead and got another bear and this is the writing board that's A6, so it'll kind of go with that case. Um, and it's the artwork by Jin Kitamura. 
and I love it. <laughs> it's like a bear playing with a tire and a flower. Like, I don't know, it's so fun and random and I love it so much. I mean, all these very whimsical pandas on all the writing boards are very adorable. So I just also really like the colors around the artwork. Like some of the other writing boards have um, like their detail color is very fluorescent, but this one is the right shade of neutral for me. So yeah, I just went ahead and picked that up. Let's go ahead and look at it. Ooh. Yeah, writing boards are a must for me. Yay, I love this. It even has a ruler on the back. Very cool. The design of this is so good. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. This next item is not for me, it is for Sam. And it is the week's cover called Tragen, which means to carry in German. So. Oh yeah, he said that I could totally do the unboxing for him. So let's see. Leather zipper pull right here. We got this like magnet feature, a magnet enclosure. And then it's like a very cool mix of fabric and leather. Another one, um, maybe I'll save that for Sam. He does include ephemera in his journals, but not very much. So yeah, what the tiny pen loop is this? This is so nice. Um, I was very curious and I asked Sam like, what would you get if you could get something from Hobonichi? And this was one of the few things that he said he would want because you know a lot of the things are very colorful. They have a lot of um, fun artwork and he is like an all black everything kind of guy, black and gold specifically. But, ooh, there's a little pop of like this nice goldish color. So that's nice. I just said black and gold too. And um, yeah, so this is perfect for him, I think. I mean, that is kind of a nice combo too. All right, wow, this was a very big purchase for returning to Hobonichi. I mean, before I was literally only getting like a day free, which is $20 or something like that. And um, just getting the A6 size. I've never gotten the Cousin before. A A5 is a little big for me nowadays. Um, and I feel like this is a huge splurge compared to what I was getting from Hobonichi in the previous years. So um, definitely not super necessary. Obviously, if you want to dip your toes into Hobonichi, there are definitely less expensive covers. But this year, I don't know. I just, this one just called to me and they really got me with it. I mean, it's like one of the few covers that are neutral. You know, like I'm a neutral girly and um, with a few pops of color here and there, muted color palettes, you know, so. This stuff really got to me, man. This is exciting, my heart is palpitating. I also feel like, I already looked at all this stuff. I opened my Atlas Stationers box yesterday and like didn't take it out of the like their wrappings, but I did look through all of them and I was literally screaming, which I can't do because it would make audio levels really awful. But my excitement was so huge and palpable and I kind of went, did like a first reaction unboxing, but I'm not gonna be screaming because my I would hurt all of your ears. No, but I was screaming. Um, all right, let's move on to the Traveler's Company stuff. All right, let's kick it off with the cover. I picked up a Camel Traveler's Notebook standard cover, and this is my third cover that I own. Very excited. Um, let me show you my other one. Here are my other covers. Yay! So this is going to be joining my Traveler's Notebook family. And I'll tell you what I plan to do with all these covers um, in a separate video, I think. This is simply a haul video. Oh! 
Okay, so let me let me take this out. This is also very usable. Okay. I'm excited to see what this looks like in standard size form. Okay. I always like to look at this thing first. I don't know why. Because they're all different, all unique. Okay, I like it. I like it a lot. Whoa. This is so matte. Oh my gosh. It's so matte compared to my other two. I forgot how much these have changed. I didn't realize like the patina was that different. It's, wow. I love it. Let's get rid of the fuzzies a little bit. Oh, okay. Here we have a blank insert. So this is like the information on how to care for your traveler's notebook. And um, I recently just oiled up these ones, so that's probably why they're shiny. <laughs> I don't know, okay. We got an extra band here. Green, love it. Okay, this is exciting. Let me just go ahead and, hello, meet your new. <laughs> Your new buddy. Okay, I got a few accessories for my things here, these guys. First, I got these brass label plates, and I cannot wait to stick them on all of these. And I'm gonna give one to Sam. So he has a black traveler's notebook, right? So I'm gonna give one to him. I don't know if he actually wants one though. So maybe I'll just save them for other things. The only things that are actually new to this year are these cover, zipper cover things. And they are limited. All right, these are like the adhesive tabs for this. And then I'm saving this for sure. The packaging, stickers, yeah. And then this is how you take them out like this. Yes. I saw this really cool hack that All About Notebooks on Instagram did. She put some thread over here and then tied it in the back and then put a sticky tab on there. So it looks like it's sewn in, but it's actually not. And I'm like, I'm totally doing that. So that way I can have some thread aesthetic on there, faux thread aesthetic. But I'm gonna put it there. I've, I haven't seen anyone I feel like I can do whatever I want, but I feel like the, the place to put is like right there. This is exciting. You want one? You want one? Do you want one? So real quick, I will just tell you, my gut instinct right now is to use this as main planner, this one as journal, and this one as commonplace book slash garden journal. And, but I will elucidate on that in a different video. I have to have a craft folder for all of my stuff. I have one for each. Very nice, just a craft folder for that. And then I have this thing. So a lot of people ask me about this whenever I show like my little traveler's notebooks. It's a cotton zip case from Traveler's Company USA.com. So I I don't know. They just don't feel complete without these sort of pocket things to me. And I haven't had one in my passport um for a long time so i really love that and they match quite well like this goes really well with the camel so i got the brown one for this i was very tempted by the lighter one but i felt like it was stain and i wouldn't like that and i want these to last for a long time so i just got the brown one so that it wouldn't stain as easily or it would camouflage stains at least 
and I also got the brown one for here because I already have like a olive -y one um, in here. So this is the one that people ask me about all the time is this color one. And I feel like that one goes better with the brown for me personally, my opinion. So yeah, but I really like the contrast that they have with this leather, you know, logo thing. But this one kind of blends in a little bit, you know, but it's fine. I still love it. Let me open this one. Real quick. Yay. All right. So this is the brown version zipper case so fun i just like putting all kinds of random stuff in there ephemera stickers um calendars mail from other people i've been doing a lot more mailing and exchanging with people and um yeah so that's very useful i'll probably set this up later and not right now because i want to show you the inserts that i'm gonna put in them which are of course going to be <laughs> my inserts from sericastudio.com you can now purchase them from my website so i have some thoughts on how i'm going to use each of these inserts in my notebooks one of the standard ones is going to be my main planner and i'm going to just draw my own layouts kind of like a bullet journal but not really i feel like bullet journaling in its pure sense is a lot different from what everyone does nowadays I'm just really gonna be drawing monthly calendars and then leaving the rest blank for to-do lists. And that's kind of like what I need in a planner. So I'm just gonna make my own, draw the calendars all out in the beginning of the book, and then the rest is going to be just notes pages. And I think that would work perfectly for me. I might only even end up using one of these inserts for the entire year. I'm not sure, but I feel like that would be a good start. And then, I probably will use two to three of these for my main journal. As you can see here, um, this lasted me three or four months, um, but I feel like I'm going to be extracting certain themes out of this one to put into other like passport size ones, such as gardening, because I realized like, like I do write a lot about my garden and I wanted to, dedicate one actual notebook but not a whole standard size one I don't think I have enough to fill up that but I did want to take that like hobby that really special hobby of mine and I also want to put like to-do lists and keep track of seeds and stuff and I want to put that in its own notebook so I'm actually going to probably put that in a um a fern one because it's like more garden themed and then have the ginkgo one with that together in the same passport cover look at that that is so pretty right there so yeah garden notebook and then like um a commonplace book sort of so here's the thing i actually tried commonplacing uh 2023 into 2024 i tried commonplacing but i think what i did was it wasn't all handwritten and i was printing a lot of stuff out and i realized that handwriting stuff that goes into your commonplace book is a pretty significant component to it so um, I realized that I wasn't exactly doing commonplacing in the way that was right for me. And I thought since I was doing it in an A5 binder, it was too much for me and it got overwhelming. So whenever something becomes too overwhelming for me, I realized that I either have to eliminate it or downsize it. And so I'm downsizing into a passport size just to get my feet wet with it. And um, yeah, I'm going to be doing commonplacing, which is the practice of collecting certain tidbits of information from books, media, anywhere around you that inspires you or you want to reference it later, you write it down into your commonplace book. So I really want to explore that more. I know that commonplacing has become a little bit more popular in the journaling and planning sphere. So I'm very fascinated by it and I want to give it a try in my passport. I kind of jumped around. What the heck was I talking about? Okay, just memory keeping, taking the gardening and putting it here. And then main planner is going to be a combination of planning my life and work. But then I'm extracting the social media and content planning portion of it and plopping it into my Hobonichi Weeks because I felt like the social media planning was really clogging up my main planner and it was like overpowering it even though I don't want it to be a super huge significant part of my life. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know, it's making sense and I feel like my 
I'm a very visual person, so like I'm kind of extracting <laughs> things and plopping them in here. It's helping me visually to organize how I want to put my life into these notebooks, basically. So thank you for bearing with me, because this was not only an unboxing, but it was a little bit of like a brainstorming session for me and talking through my ideas for how I'm going to do things next year. And here's the thing, um, I think I'm getting a little bit over ambitious. The core of my planner is the calendar, the monthly calendar. So I was like, that's the most important part. And then the rest of it, the rest of my planning is literally just writing down like a bullet journal style to-do list. I don't want to separate out work and life because sometimes when I make my to-do list, I write it in chronological order, right? So I'm like, okay, I do uh, family stuff in the morning, chores in the morning, and then the next thing I want to do is going to be like this thing for work. I don't want to separate, I've tried it before. I've tried to separate work and life and it just doesn't work for me because then I have to flip like back and forth between planners. Um, and that was annoying for me because a lot of the social media stuff was clogging up the main calendar. Like when I was doing my so content planning, I was writing down like the content on here and then plugging it into the actual squares. And I was like, eh, this is kind of too much. I want to just keep it to appointments, like the really important life stuff and like work stuff. I don't know. I'm trying to explain it and, um, trying to figure out what's going to be well. But look at this. Look at how many skipped pages I had for the, like I'm actually kind of sad about this because this is such good quality paper. I really wanted to love it, but it was just way too much space for me. I got over ambitious with it. So it was a learning opportunity for me because like I was using it to do some um, swatches and stuff and I will be saving these papers to do stuff like that. Like I'm, I might even, and this might shock some people, but I might even cut this paper out just so that I have like little pieces of scrap paper to use. Um, Cause I don't, I don't know. But so let me, let me show you. What was I gonna show you? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. So this is really exciting. As the year progresses in the months of September and October, there's a lot to look forward to. I can't wait to set up those calendars in my main planner. I'm gonna do that slowly so that I'm ready for 2025. Drawing all those calendars by hand will take a while and stamping out the uh, names of the months. So I'll just put on a nice show while I do that at night when the kids are asleep. Yeah, this is just amazing. I can't wait. I love these notebooks, how they turned out. I'm also gonna be adding the fern in there as well for next year because that's my favorite one out of the previous uh, notebook launch that I did. Whew, it, it's exciting. This is so cool. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, I know it was a little bit all over the place, a little bit chaotic, and I think it's just because I got so excited as the video went on. I was really trying to suppress my excitement in the beginning of it, and as time went on, I just let it loose. I was like so excited. And if you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you probably feel the same way about stationery. So I don't know why I was really um, trying to limit myself in the first place. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, let me know what you're using in 2025. Have you even decided yet? It is ridiculously early, honestly. But for me, I do love thinking about this stuff in the beginning of fall. So yeah, I hope you have a really wonderful planner season. And as always, happy journaling, happy planning, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.